So here, uh, after the gap analysis, the next phase is the realization phase. Realization phase. So what happens in this phase is that once you have identified the gaps, you actually incorporate those gaps into the system so the system behaves as per the expectations of the client. So this is, remember that it's not directly done into the live system wherein the client is actually working on. Instead, it's done into a uh, development system. So what happens in a development system? Um, usually every uh, company has a system landscape. Now what is a system landscape? So a system landscape is nothing but classifying or yeah, kind of having different uh, system SAP servers for each of the stages of the um, like every uh, every company has its own system landscape in the system landscape it classifies it has different servers for different reasons so let's say we have a development server I mean every company has this development server a quality server and production server so the production server is the one which is live wherein the actual uh, SAP transactions are happening and the end users who, who are working in the company who would would enter the details over here in the production system in this particular system all these systems are isolated from each other but they are the exact replica of the production so they have all the data that is available in the production and the configurations that is available in the production is present in each of these systems so they are uh, exact replica of the production quality as well as development so what do you do is that uh, if you want to incorporate any change, let's say we have identified certain gaps in the system and uh, we need to match those gaps. In that case, whatever changes you do is are done in the development system. So doing changes here wouldn't impact the quality of the production system. It would only lie over here. So what do you do? You, you do the initial changes and uh, configuration changes or the code changes uh, over here in the development system. Once you feel that the code changes are okay and they are giving the expected results, then you could have them move to quality. So what do you do in quality? In quality, you do a thorough test and ask even ask the business user or the end users who would be working on this to test it by giving him some training on this. So once he tests it and and he is okay with this functionality, then only uh, the um, change is moved to production and once it's moved to production the change is gone live and the actual end users can work start working on this so this is how the changes uh, that are done into the SAP system are managed using system landscape or SAP system landscape so every company has this format so they would have different names although but this is a generic uh, classification done by each and every company so that they have a replica of production into development and quality. So any change is to be initiated in development, then move to quality, tested uh, thoroughly, and then move to production. So in the realization pane, actual changes start, and they are tested, and then finally moved. So after realization, in realization, the changes are done in development, and uh, tested in development, initial uh, unit testing is done in development, and then finally move to quality for other testing like integration testing and other stuff so the next phase is testing so the testing can be of uh, the testing is done by the project team and then secondly by the users so you have um, two kinds of testing SIT sorry IT that is the integration testing and the user acceptance testing so integration test and um, integration test and the second one is user acceptance test and before this you have a unit test it's also called as unit testing so what happens whenever this change is incorporated in development there is a unit test carried out 
okay there is a unit test and unit test uh, is nothing but you uh, test only uh, only that particular functionality you are going to test only that particular functionality nothing else that means let's say you are going to create an order and the change was done in the order order creation you just need to create an order and check whether the order is getting created as expected okay what happens in integration testing is that you have to create an order and check if there is an impact happening in other modules as well like as i told you sap is a an integrated uh, package so it interacts with other application like the sd application interacts with fi fi interacts uh, with mm and so on and so forth so creating an order in S, uh, sd application does it have an impact in the other application as well so that is studied by the integration test and finally you have the user acceptance test once this integration test is uh, passed you have this user acceptance test in the user acceptance test the users i um, mean the it team at the client end or the people uh, who are technically sound at the client's end are train uh, are told about this functionality explained about this functionality and they are asked to test till they their requirement is satisfied so if they are satisfied they'll give you a go ahead and then only you could move the change to product production that is the live system so this is the testing phase and then finally after testing you have the go live phase so in the go live phase uh, is nothing but so all this thing changes that you have made and tested in the earlier uh, phases those changes are to be moved to production so go live is nothing but moving those changes to production because from that day onwards the changes are going to go live and the people who are working like the, the end users of the company who are working are going to access this new functionality from that time onwards so that is the go live phase it's a very critical phase uh, at this time you need to be um, you know uh, very much alert because uh, there can be a chance that even after thorough testing that you have done in quality there can be a chance that the functionality wouldn't perform as expected in production it might cause issues so you got to be very alert in this phase and then so that's why uh, it is very important to have support that is the go live support you could call this as go live support and then finally the production support so the go live support um, lasts for certain period so till the time uh, i mean business is comfortable using that functionality the new introduced functionality and uh, and production support is something which is like the ongoing support which is going on from the beginning till the end so production support would be the support for production issues that the customers come across so go live support would be specific to the changes that were done use um, done in the ga in the realization phase okay so this is how the business cycle works and you have to work in each of these phases i mean you will get a chance to either to work uh, in all of these phases or you could get selected for specifically for one particular stage and or either production support or go live support and so on and so forth so it depends upon what level you are what experience you have how much understanding you have and so on and so forth usually uh, mm, freshers who are new who have domain experience uh, such people get chances to work in testing and then production support so in testing you get uh, to understand uh, how the business process goes on in a particular business in different particular businesses so if you have worked on multiple projects in testing then you will have an idea like how does the business process flow in each particular industries so that would help you enhance knowledge about the business process and even uh, just uh, and make you aware about certain functionalities in sap which are required during testing apart from that you would be also hired as a production support executive wherein you will have to work for resolving tickets that the customers come across when they are performing something onto the live system on day to day basis so you'll get tickets which you need to resolve so that is what is done in the production support once you have enough experience uh, working on these areas probably you might get a chance to work in a roll out project or an upgrade project or a development project i mean if it's an mnc usually you would come ac uh, come across only these jargons 
but in case um, you're working for some company which uh, it can also be an MNC a big company um, which was using some other uh, ERP and it is moving to SAP in that case uh, you could also get a chance to work right from this point till this point so this is the way uh, a consultant works so a consultant needs to have a very good understanding of the technical aspects of sales and distribution as well as the the domain ex, uh, as well as the domain experience that he has gained through sales and distri uh, distribution work that he has done earlier so now coming back to the sales process uh, so i'm just going to quickly explain you how does the sales cycle move uh, in general and in SAP so firstly let me tell you what happens so whenever you go and buy a phone what happens is that uh, firstly there are telephone companies which advertise uh, which advertise their products either on let's say take an example of you want to buy a telephone uh, or a mobile phone let's say and these companies usually advertise uh, on newspaper televisions and other, other stuff you watch the uh, advertisement commercials and you feel like having that phone because it has certain features that satisfy your requirement so in this case like what will happen is that you would be the customer and uh, the vendor would be the, uh, the the shop from where you're buying the buying the product so what will happen in this case you'll go to the shop you'll ask uh, for him which is nothing but an inquiry will in which in which you'll inquire about the product you ask for the information even though you know some of the functionalities but you'll try to ask him more info and uh, ask him to do some comparisons with other products and uh, finally uh, based uh, based upon the information you get from him uh, you decide uh, whether to go for it or not so that is nothing but an inquiry so initial level is nothing but an inquiry secondly once you are satisfied with the product and if you choose one product based upon uh, a detailed inquiry now what do you do is that you ask him for a quotation what will this cost if I buy it right now so that is nothing but a quotation he'll give you a quote and tell him like this is what it will cost so you'll try to negotiate with him uh, if it fits your budget then you will go ahead with the price that he has quoted or else you'll negotiate up to a certain extent and if he comes down then it's well and good if it doesn't come on then probably it's your decision whether to buy it or not so let's say you decide to go ahead and buy it so you ask him uh, that you want to buy it so in that case what he'll do is that he will create he'll make an order against your name and um, with mobile as the mobile phone as the particular or the uh, product that you're buying from his shop so he'll create this order in your name and bill it to you itself on the amount that you have agreed so he'll give you an invoice that you'll have to pay against the invoice or the bill that he has given to you and you can take the product along with you so this is how a, a simple sales cycle works so in SAP the same thing happens over here but uh, it is a little uh, little different it's not that different though it is a little different because here in sap what uh, uh, sap is usually implemented uh, in man um, bigger organization and not in small shops small shops also might be using some software for managing the businesses but uh, because they don't need such high-end uh, softwares to be implemented in their shop and it is not affordable and economical for them to have SAP implemented over there so usually they go for some local made software so let's say um, it's a manufacturing company and it it is it has implemented SAP so let's say the, the company which has implemented SAP is ABC company and it has a customer which always orders from this particular company so let's say this customer wants to buy something uh, I mean he is a new customer and he wants to know more about the product so in that case what he'll do is that he'll come to this comp uh, he'll get in touch with the comp uh, sales reps of this company and ask about or send an email to the sales reps of this company asking about the information about the product so what will, what is that called as it is called as an inquiry so once a customer requests information about a product so um, the uh, the people in this company abc company the sales reps in this company abc would create an inquiry inquiry is nothing but we need to respond to it to the customer and uh, by what time do we need to respond so all these details are held in a inquiry document so every important step or a milestone in sap uh, is being recorded in the form of a document 
a document. SAP creates certain documents at each stage of the sales cycle. So inquiry is one of the documents. So when the customer sends an email, an inquiry is created in the system uh, mentioning that this particular customer, this is his name, he is located at this particular location and um, he has requested information for this particular product. So that if you record it, you could have his name for future reference as well. Like let's say if he inquires a product and you provide some information to him and if he doesn't buy the product, you could even use his information later on after a an year and ask him whether you would require this product or not so that the sales of the company boosts up. So it can be a possibility that after a year he is ready to buy the product. So you create an inquiry document mentioning all the details of the customer and what details he has requested. Let's say the customer is okay with the product and he says okay. So what would you code for the product that I have asked? So in that case, if you want to send a code to the customer, that particular stage or phase in SAP is represented by a document again and that document is called as the quotation document, the same name as it as you have in real time. So you create a quotation in the system and uh, have the product in that uh, quotation and uh, mention the amount that you will be uh, charging to the customer. So you will create a quotation in the system and SAP has such functionality that even if you create a quotation document in the system it has a functionality to automatically send an email to the customer. So the quotation is automatically emailed to the customer's email address mm -hmm. that has been entered into the SAP system. So this is how uh, SAP works out. Mm -hmm. So is the customer receives the email about the quotation, he looks at the quotation, if he is okay then he will place you an order. So the order placed by the customer is in the form of a purchase order. So he gives you a purchase order. So in SAP, that is again a document which falls under the MM module of SAP. Okay. MM module. Or the MM application of SAP. Okay. So let's not consider production order over here because we are only dealing with the sales cycle because we are the people who are selling the product. So he sends you the purchase order. So purchase order is nothing but a legal document which has all the um, terms and conditions associ associated with it and uh, and uh, and mentioning that he has accepted the quotation that you had sent and the price that you had quoted in that particular quotation so once you get the pro uh, purchase order now you get a confirmation that yes we can go ahead and manufacture the product in my plant produce it in my plant and then deliver it to the customer by the designated delivery date so the quotation uh, also has the delivery date as well so an approximate delivery date so once you get the purchase order in order to process the order and actually start processing the order, SAP uh, needs, uh, uh, I mean, we create a sales order document in the system. Now, this is again the third milestone or the third important phase of the sales cycle. So when we receive a purchase order, we directly create a per sales order against it. So unless and until we get a, uh, we don't get a confirmation from the customer, we won't create a sales order. Sales order is nothing but starting manufacturing of the product or initiating the dispatch of the product from our company. So sales order would initiate the production or probably the dispatch of the product from our company. So once we get the sales order, what we do is that we ask the production team to manufacture it or else if uh, we have it in stock, uh, if the material is available in, uh, in stock and not reserved for any particular any other customer in that case we'll directly pick up the material from the store from our plant and initiate the delivery so now initiating the delivery is nothing but the creating delivery document or outbound delivery as it is called in sap creating an outbound delivery document in the sap system so when you create a delivery against the sales order it means that you are initiating a delivery for the sales order quantity Okay, so sales order will have all the information like what quantity the customer has ordered in the purchase order, how much uh, price that he has agreed, so all the things would be there in the sales order. What are the taxes applicable on the product, okay, and other stuff. So now we have delivery, we initiate delivery when we have the material in the stock or when the production team manufactures the products and uh, sends it to the storage or warehouse location. So once the material is available in the stock, will initiate a delivery uh, for del once del delivery is initiated the allied activities that fall under delivery like um, if you want to deliver something you need to pick it from a particular store uh, location so you have a store for it or a go down you need to go into the go down pick it so for that we need a pick list so the pick list is generated using the picking functionality that is available in the delivery so that pick list is given to the 
um, the person who is working in the warehouse he takes the pick list and he take picks up the material that is be, uh, being ordered by the customer brings it out in the outbound delivery section uh, delivery section where from where the material is to be picked then packing uh, if required it is done for that particular material at the packing stations so for that we need to uh, the delivery also has this functionality of packing wherein in the delivery document you mentioned that this is how the uh, customer wants the product so this is the kind of packing he's requiring so you should mention the packing part as well and once you have done the packing you place the product into the truck or uh, the other vehicle which is going to carry the material to the customer's location so once you place the product and the truck leaves your premises or the plant then uh, then you post the goods issue which means that you have sent the material out of your warehouse out of your company and the material is being transported by a transport vendor to the customer's location so this is how the distribution part works so goods issue means nothing but this is again a functionality available in delivery when you carry out a goods issue it means that the, the material is no longer in your store it has already left your store and it will be reaching the customer within the stipulated time once the customer re receives the material okay th this material is received by the customer at his location he'll give you a go ahead that yes i have received the material so that is nothing but a proof of delivery so once a customer sends he might send you an email okay once you receive an email like he has received the material you go ahead and start billing the material uh, billing uh, billing involves creating an invoice in the name of the customer who has purchased the product at the price which is agreed in the quotation and purchase order okay so you'll create billing and billing the billing type that is being created is nothing but an invoice it is printed and again emailed to the customer so SAP has this functionality of creating so now the ones that are marked uh, dark here like from here inquiry till this point are nothing but the documents in SAP and these mark and these bold um, letters or words mark a particular phase in the sales cycle so once the invoice is sent to the customer the customer has to initiate a payment the customer initiates the payment based on the invoice and makes the payment either by check bank transfer or whatever it is once we receive the customer we post the payments in the payment section okay so this is how a complete end-to-end -end sales cycle works into SAP all right so this is in short about the sales cycle in SAP and what consultants role would be when he starts working as a consultant